Hi everybody, this is Luchi Dolgario and this is episode two of Walk the Talk, um, the podcast, Walk the Talk, the podcast. So um, today's guest is a Manchester doorman, a self-defense instructor, um, a combative coach. His name is Julian Mason. I hope I, I, hope I pronounced that right, Julian. It's J-U-L. Uh, uh, no, no, uh, no, I don't worry about it. It's French, I believe. Yes, it's French, I believe. It is so, French. That's correct, man. Julia, I've, 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 those who those who know me know my um, background in the UK martial arts scene, the British martial arts scene. And that's where I, I, yeah. I come across Julian and, and that's where I met Julian. So, um, but Julian has interesting stories. And I want to, I want to, I want to get right inside his head on this one because um, Julian, you, you, you know, you're, you're one of the nicest, hardest fuckers I ever known, man. Do you know what I mean? You're, you're one of them. Yeah, I've seen you. I've seen you. I've seen you training. I've seen you training. I've seen you on the mats. I've seen you. I've seen your, you know, whack, whack things, man. And I've seen the way you train and everything. But let's go right back to the beginning, man. Who, who is Julian Mason? Who are you, man? Where, where is? Let's go right back to the beginning, my friend. Let's go for it. Who am I? Yeah. Well. I I'm a citizen of the universe, man. I don't even see myself as being the citizen of a country or the citizen yeah. of uh, planet Earth. Yeah, yeah. I think we're all made of stardust anyway, man. So, you know, it's very small-minded to say I'm from this country or this country. I'm a citizen of the universe, man. That's that's yeah. how I view myself anyway. Yeah. Where was you born, mate? Where was you born? I was born in France. So I was born yeah. in Paris. I was born in the 94th district of Paris, in the suburbs of Paris. Okay. And what was that like growing up? Well, uh, growing up, basically, I stayed in France until I was twelve years old. Okay. So at first, I was born. I was born in Paris. Uh, then uh, I moved to Lyon with my mother. Yeah. And once again, everywhere I ended up living was uh, shit all. I mean, you know, whether it was in France or in Latvia or in Lithuania or in Ukraine or all, all the or in Glasgow, you know, all, all the countries I live it, I lived in. Yeah. I always ended up in the worst, roughest area. Even now in Manchester, I'm in Brinnington. You know, anyone that's from <laughs> Manchester, they, they will know Brinnington. They will yeah, know yeah. what Brinnington is like. Brinnington's oh. got a reputation. So did you get did you get uh, into what, a lot of trouble yeah, then? What, did you get into a lot of trouble when you was young? Yes, quite a lot. Unfortunately, uh, mm. I think that most self-protection instructor people that are worth uh, training with and watching anyway uh, have been experiencing violence from a young age. I think it's it's part of the game. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, of course. First, you need to stick to kind of heal yourself from your own traumas. And have I been faced with violence from a young age? Yes, I surely have. I surely yeah. have. Yeah. Uh, plus, you know, I was diagnosed with ADHD and I was on the mild spectrum of autism as well. So okay. I was a bit different. And, you know, I was getting bullied a lot when I was younger. So I had to learn to look after myself quite, you know, quite fast. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us about, you know, you got to you got to the UK. So you came over when you was around 12, did you say? Uh, you lived in France until you was 12. Then you came over. Did you come over to the UK I then? Traveled, I traveled a lot. So, so I left France. I was 12 years old. The first time it was to go to, um, it was Lapland. Uh, okay. It was a friend of my father. Uh, so it was a friend of my father that was owning a, um, a touristic company, like a tourism company uh, in Lithuania. And I was also doing a lot of work in Lapland, in Finland. Oh, okay. uh, so at that point, so basically, at that point, already at age 12, 13, I was already getting a, in a lot of trouble at schools. I got expelled from a lot of schools because I always yeah. had a problem with authority. Uh, I was getting bullied a lot. And eventually, at some point, I went from one extreme to the other. I went from letting people walk all over me to uh, beating everyone, basically, uh, beating everyone up. And I got in trouble. Uh, I got a bit in trouble. I got in, involved with the wrong people. Uh, the wrong group of people when I was younger, mm -hmm. and eventually I started to get in trouble. Uh, I started to get in trouble with the law. It was very difficult for my mother, yeah. Uh, and so eventually she said uh, there, there was a situation. Uh, it, it basically I had to go to court uh, for, for various things. You know, I'm not going to mention everything, but we've all yeah, done yeah, some yeah. some shit when we were younger. Oh, absolutely. Um, and basically the 
what it what it was is the judge said, look, I, uh, either you ha- you will have to go to a specialized uh, institution, which is basically uh, not a jail, but you know, for young offenders, young offenders. sort of, yeah, sort yeah, of yeah. Thing. yeah, yeah, center, uh, which I have been in different different you know, places when I was younger because it was very difficult for my mother uh, mm-hmm. to deal with me. Bless her. You know, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm really sorry. I mean, I'm not, I'm not proud of it. I love my mother to be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but basically, uh, at some point, uh, my father had to, to physically come and uh, get me from France, you know, come and take me away from France so that I didn't end up uh, in one of these places. Mm. Uh, so I ended up going to, well, at first, sorry, at first, my father sent me to his friend in Lapland, uh, where I stayed there for maybe, I uh, can't remember, like two, three months. It was like big winter. We went to feed the reindeers every day. It was crazy. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. really good, actually. Quite nice. The northern lights and everything. Uh, I, I wasn't at that point in my life. I wasn't, I wasn't um, how do you say appreciating the things as much as I do now that I got a bit older and wiser. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, of but course. Eventually, that was the transition. Lapland was a transition. And then my father came to see me and uh, he said, look, you're not going back to France now because you're going to get in trouble if you go back to France. So you're coming back with me. And my father at that point lived in Latvia. Um, so he was he was a police attaché at the French embassy. So he was a diplomat. Yeah. Uh, so I ended up uh, I ended up in Latvia. I ended up growing up in Eastern Europe, uh, Latvia, mainly Latvia and Lithuania, because uh, my father was working between Latvia, Russia, and Lithuania. And I ended up getting involved with my father um, because my father was in the military before that. He was a former parachute regiment soldier. Okay. Uh, and he and he was also a, a CQB hand to hand combat instructor. That's what his specialty. He was. Wow. He was a, okay. A, he was a teacher. He was, he was basically an instructor in, in the French army and then in the French police, the, the CRS, uh, which are uh, the, the police anti-riot uh, special forces. Yeah. So uh, at some point, as he was working, even in, uh, in Eastern Europe, he was working, he was providing training, uh, tactical and combat training for various gov- uh, governmental units, uh, such as... The Latvian undercover police, yeah. uh, the Lithuanian, the Lithuanian, the, the second regiment of internal forces of Lithuania, which was IG Absolgos uh, Interventions Group, was like uh, it was a bit like um, like military police special forces uh, mm. that that uh, that he was training, and uh, and worked also with the prison guards in Lukiškes in Vilnius, and I, I was fortunate enough to uh, assist him with with that training so from a young age i was involved with teaching uh the military and the police and uh you know the prison guards uh, so it's, it's stuff that i've bathed in from from the adolescence you know really from age 14 15 mm. uh, i was already with my father assisting him teaching um and eventually obviously you know because uh I still was young. It was quite difficult between me and my father sometimes. And, um, you know, we didn't always get along uh, with my father. It was quite difficult. Even now, you know, it's slowly getting better, but it's really taking its time. And eventually, at some point, um, <clears throat> my father kicked me out. <laughs> uh, wow. I said, Julian, son, you got you to gotta learn to fly. If, you got to learn to fly for yourself. Well, he didn't say it that nice. He said, I'm not going to say what he said, but yeah, it wasn't that nice. You can say whatever you, you can say uh, whatever you want on this one. You can say whatever you like, mate. <laughs> yeah, well, he said, you know, he said you go one hour to pack your shit. And if I come back and I see you here, I will, uh, you know, I will break your face. Wow. 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 <laughs> so, uh, you know, yeah, it was, it, it was quite, it, it was quite, uh, quite harsh, but you know are, what? And you... I ended up, um, are you glad he did that? Go on. Are you glad he did that? Right. Okay. <clears throat> Am I glad he did that? I think that that's probably one of the best things he could have done right then. Yeah. I yeah, didn't. Yeah, yeah. I didn't agree with it right then. But looking at where I am at right now, yeah. I'd say that it wasn't a bad. De- it wasn't a bad decision to uh, to make. I've cursed him for years and years and years, bro. When I arrived in the UK, I was homeless for four months in the streets of London. Wow. You know, with 10 euros in my pockets and more more stuff in my bags uh, than my own body weight. And I was going to the Salvation Army. I, I, I slept in fucking graveyards, bro, in London. Really? Do you know what I mean? 
Yes, what was it like? Bro, I used to, what, I used to, right. So I didn't know, man. I didn't know. So what was that like being homeless in London? <laughs> oh, being homeless in London. So, you just, first... you, so, so was this your first taste of the UK? That was my first taste of the UK. Mate. So you came, I, I arrived. You came over, nowhere to stay. Nowhere to stay, bro. Wow, man. Tell us about that. I had. Tell us about that. So I was. I was I was waking up earlier than than all the other homeless people because we okay. all knew each other. There was a lot of homeless people at that point. You know, that was around two thousand eight, bro. Mate, this um, still is. This still is. Yeah. Even now. Yeah. Maybe oh, even it's more. crazy, mate. Maybe it's even absolutely more. Yeah, crazy, yeah. mate. Yeah. So I, I used to wake up earlier than everyone else and I used to go to sleep later than everybody else because I didn't want anyone to see me. I used to climb the gate at the fucking cemetery in uh, Westminster. Do you know what wow. I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. and then it's the the um, the Irish travellers got me off the street, uh, gave me a job and a caravan to live in in Leighton Buzzard. I used to okay. live on a, on a, I used to live on a gypsy site called um, Toddsbury Farm in Leighton Buzzard. A right. big gypsy site, yeah, a big Irish traveler site. Uh, and I've been there for about a year. I was working for one guy called Michael. And then at some point, Michael had to go back to Ireland and he sent me uh, basically to his cousin, or was it his cousin? They're all cousins and brothers. You never really know, <laughs> right, with them. But yeah. he sent me to uh, his, his cousin. And uh, that was another site, I think that was in Redbourne, another small, much smaller gypsy site on, on Redbourne. And the work wasn't as constant and I was spending a lot of time at the site, which I didn't really like because we yeah. weren't treated very well. Um, and eventually some shit happened, Do you know what I mean? There was a few things happened. I ended up living because that was the best choice. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't be here now to uh, do that podcast with you. Yeah, so, uh, I'm, glad. I'm glad you are. I'm glad yeah. You are. So, so yeah, that, that that was the beginning. That was the beginning of England. But just just to kind of you know re, uh, rewind a bit. So I grew up in Eastern Europe, and when I was yeah when I was 18, 18 19, uh, then that's when I moved to the UK. He's still young. He was a young man. Yeah, a young yeah. man at eighteen. You know, my 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 son's eighteen now. You know now, and yeah. I, I can't I can't imagine him just. Leaving the country and starting again. So, wow. Then, so you know, currently you're 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 a Manchester doorman, and yeah. you know, to, to to do that kind of kind of job, you need you need to be a certain character, Julian, which which, which you are. I know what you're capable of because you know I've 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 been lucky to come to your seminars, etc., and train with you, and you you know you've come to you've come to my events, and we. You know those those who know me who are listening to this. I I, I do a, another podcast, a, 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 ju, a jiu jitsu stroke martial arts podcast. But yeah. you know this is this isn't really um, about the martial arts. It's more about yourself and the the, the people I'll be. I, I'm looking at interviewing yeah. the, some of the most dangerous people on the planet, but turn their lives around and 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 be you know became great humans and great and, and, and done great things you've had it really really tough and yeah. you know but and, and what i see you well, i still do today, to a certain extent yeah but what 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 you've what you've achieved yeah, today you know, is, life, is, life is, is not is easy man. yeah i know i know i know tell us well yeah tell us all my friend how you how you got into the the combative side of of your life and, and the self-defense because you you currently you you're, you're a self-defense teacher you, you, you teach combatives. People might not know the terminology of combatives. Um, so More yeah, self-protection. Yeah, yeah, tell us a little bit about that, how, how that all got started. Right, okay. Yeah. So really, uh, you know, it all started with the martial arts. It all started with training in the martial arts when I was four years old. Um, yeah. Really, the first time I've seen Bruce Lee on the TV, it really did something to me. Um you know, my mother is telling that story to everyone that, you know, she used to hear my footsteps all the time because I was hyperactive, mate. I, yeah. I used to run left, right, center. She would know <laughs> where I was in, in the house all the time. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And at some point she couldn't hear me anymore. So she got worried. And when she uh, when she came to the um, to the living room, I was in front of the TV and there was Bruce Lee swinging his nunchucks. And I was like, I was just looking at him. I was just looking at him. I wasn't moving. And... 
I knew this is this is what I wanted to do. I knew from a very young age I I want to to become a martial artist. I want yeah. to teach people. I want to learn how to look after myself. And uh, a, a, a very big aspect of all this because I was getting bullied a lot was uh, I want to you know I want to become one of the most dangerous person in the world because so that no one can fuck with me anymore. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that that yeah, was really that, what it was. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Then as I got as I got a bit older and wiser, you know, all the philosophy of martial arts was drilled in and it, it changed me in a very, very good way. You know, it changed me. Uh, but at first it was martial arts and I've, I've trained a lot of different martial arts. I couldn't get enough of it. It was an obsession. I, I Plus, you know, uh, my I'm only 35 now. So by the time when I was around that age, uh, you know, I was, you know, the, the internet was already there. Uh, YouTube was was all was coming out, and I could already you know study and look at people's videos and who was doing what. And mm. do you know what I mean in terms yeah. of martial arts? So yeah. I was studying re really. It was ninety percent of my time. I was thinking about it. I was dreaming about it. I was, and I still am to a certain extent. Maybe yeah. not as much as I used to, uh, but I still am to 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 a big to a big extent. And so. Obviously, my father being involved in the martial arts, my father being involved more in in the the military combatives aspect of things and the and the police police yeah. tactics. So yeah. all the control control and restrain, uh, handcuffing, uh, some weaponry. Like uh, I, I learned my first weapon with my father, which was the tomfa, the side yeah. handle baton, uh, which is a weapon from uh, the the Japanese martial art kobudo. Mm -hmm. um, so I've, I've, you know, I've, I've dwelled with all this. I've learned really as much as I could. I was like a sponge, uh, and I did a bit of training with my father. And then eventually, when I started to train with my father a bit more, that's when uh, I had this this shift from martial art to hybrid systems and you know self defense systems and. Very often, hybrid systems that are derived from uh, the JKD concept, from Danny yeah. Osanto, do you know what I mean? That sort of thing, mm. because most of the big names in France, like uh, Charles Jousseau, Frank Ropers, uh, Robert Paturel, all these people that have either a, a, a very deep uh, Penchak Silat background that went to Indonesia uh, to train with grandmasters and came back and, and did their own thing, yeah, uh, to teach the police and stuff like that, like Charles Rousseau did, or um, or people like Robert Paturel that went to the states uh, that trained with uh, Danny Nosanto and that came back and created the the police Tonfa method, which is the first uh, uh, Tonfa method that I've learned. Yeah. So I looked at I looked at all these people and training with my father straight away. He taught me to look at this sort of um this sort of mindset this sort of philosophy the philosophy of jeet kundo really which is absorb what is useful reject what is useless and add your own thing you know make yeah, your well, own you yeah, create your own martial art yeah yeah so then my whole focus yeah and then then my whole focus was to create my own style you know what i mean mm. and I, I and i was training a lot of different arts i mean i started with uh, japanese traditional arts uh with judo uh, then i moved on to karate did some taekwondo uh, some traditional jujitsu, you know, so a, a bit of everything, really. And then I got uh, more into the combat sports, so more into the boxing and the Thai mm. boxing and the MMA. A little bit yeah. later in life, though. I wish I wish I would have started that a bit younger, but yeah. uh, you know, I, I I still got to it and I really like it. Um, right now, when it comes to martial arts, I don't really train the traditional martial arts as much yeah. because. I focus. I focus on realism, and, and I don't want to bring down the the traditional martial arts at all because I love them. This this is how I started. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But, yeah. but what it is now, it, it, it's like right. I am thinking: How do I build skills? Do you know how do I build real skills, and how do I pressure test? How do I make sure that this shit is going to work when I'm adrenalized, uh, when I'm scared, when I'm fatigued, when I'm disorientated, when I'm confused? Do you know what I mean? All this stuff comes into play. So. It's there that I, um, you know, I started to incorporate a lot, a lot of different, a lot of different bits, and I looked at a, a lot of different people. But there are a few people that really um, revolutionized the way that I train, the way that I see martial arts, and and my approach of combat right now. Mm. And I would say that the main two people 
Well, I'd say three people. One of them, you might not know him. His name is Vincent Rocca from okay. uh, Rapid Defense System in France. Yeah. Uh, who was also very, very street-based stuff. Yeah. He's basically taking wrestling and boxing and, and uh, French savate and a bit of everything, a bit of crave, a bit of silat. And but it was really street oriented, and that that's really Vincent that got me into the street mindset of combat. Although you know I'm a street kid, so I am street wise, I'm street smart. I know violence. I've, I've been exposed to violence. I know how it works. But it was Vincent that really got me into that sort of training. Uh, then there are two main people really that I mention all the time that really uh, influenced me, and two people that I've trained with. Yep. Um, uh, so the uh, the first one is Tommy Carothers from uh, Glasgow. Yeah. Who yeah, is yeah. Uh, who is who is teaching uh, traditional Jeet Kune Do, original Jeet Kune Do. Yeah. So we're not talking. Fast we're not talking hell, about the JKD concept. Oh yeah, yeah. amazingly fast. Yeah, oh, he's, and he's, great. He's, he's ans- I come across him years ago. I come across Tommy very, years very ago, and, I, and it was wow. He did some movies, didn't yeah. he? Well, he helped with some movies, didn't he? Um, he wanted to at some point. I, I've heard a few stories. He wanted to uh, with Logan, Logan Bay or something like yeah, that. Yeah, with, with the back, with well, well, the back, Bay. yeah, with the background of films, you know, with the fight, um, with the fight yeah, scenes yeah. and that. And that's when I that that's when I come across him. And what I did notice was it's, it's just how fast he was. How, he's very, very absolutely fast. rapid. Absolutely, yeah, yeah that's why rapid. I, yeah, powerful. Very yeah. knowledgeable, one of the best teacher I ever had. Completely yeah, revolutionized definitely. the definitely. way that I see fighting. Yeah, it still does. When I came still to does, Glasgow, man. because I went to, eh? he still does. Oh yeah, it still does. Yeah, it still does. So when, when I went yeah. to, when I went to Glasgow, I'm. I already had about 21 years uh, of martial art under my belt. Uh, mm. But I of what I was doing, just to focus on lead hand, the groin kick, the side kick, and yeah. the boxing combos, and, and that was it. So yeah. we're not talking about the, the JKD concept. We're not talking about uh, Danny no Santo lineage. We're talking more about Ted Wong lineage when it comes to Jeet Kune Do. Okay. Much more street, much more street-oriented uh, Tommy's Jeet Kune Do. In fact, I'll be honest, I don't know anyone. I don't know any G- JKD teachers out there that he, that their JKD is so street oriented like Tommy. Yeah, yeah. No, Tommy no. just the way that he thinks it's street. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. Knock him, just yeah, knocking yeah. the fuck out. Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah, yeah. it's really a street. Plus he's a Glaswegian. Do you know what I mean? So, absolutely, absolutely. So, um, that, so, that was that was the that was the first guy that that, yeah, that yeah, yeah. Uh, really uh, influenced me. me. And the second guy is Lee Lee Morrison, of course. Let's we're going to come back. We're going to come to Lee Morrison, and we're going to come to Lee Morrison. Okay. But I just want to I just want to mention because um, this this will go probably on. go out to different audience. Please Google JKD G Kundo. Bruce Lee's yeah. art. So that's what basically Julian's talking about. And then if, you, know, you, you know we're going to get we're going to get an audience like, okay, what the fuck's Julian on about? What's this JKD? But what, what what's this? What's this? You know the podcast is what nah, everybody it's, knows what JKD. It's a non. It's a non. F- yeah, it's a non martial arts um, podcast. So we'll we'll. Uh, I, I just want people to, you know, but I'll, I I can share some links anyway. Your the next the next character that you, you you've mentioned i would love to have a chat with him on here um definitely because if, if there's anyone who's walked yeah. walk, walk the talk in in the self-defense oh, yeah. world in the oh, yeah, real, real realism and the realistic self-defense world is i'll let you introduce yeah. him i'll let you I'll, I'll let you carry on there julian so lee morrison so just tell right, us a little so, bit about so lee morrison, lee morrison is uh Lee, okay. Lee, Lee Morrison is is a in the world of self protection. Uh, he's got over forty schools. All of, uh, he's he's taught seminars in in pretty much all over the world, all the way up to uh, a TO one operator, special forces, and everything. So he's yeah. he's definitely the real deal. Um, yeah. I've watched his videos for years and years and years. I used to watch his DVDs when I was younger. Yeah. Uh, and, and that was great. And eventually, at some point, I got to train with him. Uh, at first, how it was is that 
uh, I was posting my videos on YouTube, on certain, uh, uh, sorry, on YouTube and on Facebook groups. Yeah. Uh, and I ended up posting a video, I think, on his group or a couple of videos. And uh, one day he sent me an email, you know, like, hi, it's Lee. Uh, I'm, uh, I've seen your videos. I really like what you do. I think you're doing great. Uh, here's my phone number. Give me a ring. There might, be a, there might be a chat to have between you and I for your future. You know, mm -hmm. there might be some opportunities there should you want to. And I was, fuck, you know, it's like, you know, getting a letter from Santa Claus. Do you know what I mean? Of course, of so, course, yeah. He's a head uh, coach. He's, so, well, he's a founder of Urban Combatives, the founder and is the founder of yeah. urban combatives yes so guys get 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 onto google google urban combatives lee morrison um i'm hoping when it comes I, I would, combatives is yeah top, i would top, like top. to get i would like to get leon um because he, he has a i'll speak i'll speak with him listen i've yeah, spoken to him there. about you already yeah he's yeah, just he's yeah. just a very old school it's just a very old school guy you need to catch him in the right at the right moment he, do you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah well i'm absolutely. sure if i speak to him I'm, I'm, I'm sure we could arrange something man brilliant 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 so but um re really good guy yeah for sure yeah, yeah. he's uh, a father figure one of my best friends and and now my boss since i'm an instructor under him so yeah, yeah. That's, that's brilliant man that's brilliant so so Tell us about how you brought your your combatives to the door. So you 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 you're dorming in Manchester, um, right? And uh, you know, obviously we, we we spoke earlier about the there are rough parts everywhere, and um, you know some some <laughs> yeah. some very very dangerous doors to work on in Manchester. What's 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 the, oh that's for sure. Yeah, do you think you you you, you mentioned earlier that you you know you wanted to do your own system, what works and yeah. That's the reason why you, you you know you went from system to system, and I, I'm assuming you took the best from from ev everything. How did that? How did that go to, go onto the door with you? Right. So did you have? Did you honest. did you think you had the useful tools to 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 do do the job? Uh, job? Well, when when there is no other choice, yeah. then sure, you know, I've I have had the tools to deal with violence, uh, but but the thing. So when it comes to working on the doors, uh, it, it's not, you know, a lot of people think that to be a good doorman, you, you have to be able to scrap. And that's one thing for sure. Yeah. You know, you yeah. shouldn't be afraid to be punched in the face. You shouldn't be afraid to, to get in a fight. Uh, it's definitely a mindset thing. It takes a certain mindset to work the doors. It's not for everyone. Mm. But, um, you know, it, it, you really need to focus on your customer service. You really need to focus on how you speak to people, how you present yourself, uh, yeah. how you communicate with people, your de-escalation skills and tactics, yeah. how you diffuse a situation, uh, you know, knowledge about, you know, conflict management and resolution using partial compliancy or, or applied psychology, whatever tool you need in order to get the result that you want without having to use force. Yeah, so yeah. that's really the goal. That is the goal on the doors. Um, it's not always possible to get the result you want without using force. Uh, but, you know, we, we try our best. We try our best. It depends on people, but I do try my best. I'm always viewed as... The nice doorman that smiles to people, that makes yeah. friends with people. That's why I got a good reputation when it comes to that. Uh, but then again, people know I'm not to be fucked with as well because I can turn it. I can turn it up as well when I need to. So when it comes to using all this on the doors, it's not mm. so something that I focus on as much as people would think. Oh, that guy can fight. He must do really well on the doors. Well, I'll be honest with you. I've talked my way out of uh, altercations. Mm. In, on the doors, uh, ninety percent of the time, yeah. And then the yeah, remaining, yeah. the remaining ten percent of the time, well, sometimes you have to use, you have to use. Force. As the shit, as the uh, shit ever hit the fan, like fucking out, so it, 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 it's off now. And I know we spoke about right, it, but because you can, you you can bang someone out. I've seen it myself. Yes, you, you, yes, but you need to be very the, the, careful. The way, it's not like yeah, exactly. It's yeah. not like in the nineteen eighty in the nineteen eighties. Yeah, exactly, man. When you, when you, you when Dorman, yeah, when Dorman were known as just bouncers, yeah, there was yeah. no badge. There was no badges, was there? The hardest, the hardest fucking guy on the on the block was was, was a Dorman. If he was a, all you had to do is be big, big, juiced up, be a, be a hard head, man look, of reputation. Yeah, 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 exactly. Look the part, and well, yeah. um, you know, you know, you got the job, didn't you? Well, the 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 thing is, I've, personally, you know. 
I, I try not, I, I try not, I, I don't like hurting people. I think hurting people is stupid. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I will not run away from a fight, but yeah. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to start it and I'm going to do everything uh, for it not to, not to go there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But it, it has happened. Uh, we've, we've had a lot of situations. I mean, every, every couple of weekends, uh, something is happening, you know, every, yeah, yeah. every weekend something is happening. Uh, I've worked on different doors. Some of them were really fucking dangerous, and some mm. of them were, you know, m more much quieter. So it really depends of what area you work, uh, you work in, what sort of what sort of club, uh, what sort of people are, um, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. What, what sort of people are visiting that that club. Uh, but have I had a, a baptism of fire, like Lee Morrison likes to call it? Uh, not not on the level that he has for sure. Yeah, not yeah. on the level that he yeah, has yeah, for yeah. sure. I mean, the man's got stabbed. The man got, you know, the, he he's went through all sorts of shit. I've had some knife encounters, mm. uh, not on the doors, not on the doors. I've had some knife encounters in the street where I grew up uh, in Eastern Europe, uh, and I I've been lucky most of the time. I've been lucky. Uh, I managed to uh, escape, avoid escape, uh, and a couple of times I was lucky enough to uh, to be able to fight back yeah. without getting yeah, yeah. caught and without getting stabbed. And that's a big thing. Um, so I don't think I had this this type of baptism of fire like Lee is talking about, but I've definitely had my fair share of scraps on the doors, that's for sure. And we yeah, see it yeah. every weekend. I mean... You know, you do that job, you have to be desensitized to violence, man, because mm. if you are not, that's not for you. You're going to get shocked. I yeah. mean, I've seen women, I've seen women get punched in the face and, and have their face all flat at the end. Mm. Uh, it, it's not nice. To, it's not nice to see, mate. Violence I, is never nice. No, to no, no, it's not. I did five years and it was pretty shit, to be honest. I won't recommend it to nobody. Yeah. Uh, but however, however. You know, I, I met my wife when I was on the door. We've been together for 20 years. So nice. it wasn't all that bad, Julian. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't all that yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you know, obviously, yeah, you're, yeah, yeah, you're right. But was, it, was there a time where you think, think, did you ever think, like, do, do you know what? I'm not going to work today. I've had enough of this shit. I've, had, I've just had, generally had enough. And I'll tell you what. Or, I'll tell you what. Right now, at age yeah. 35, yeah? Yeah. I mean, I've been doing the doors on and off for years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've started. I've started to do the doors in Lithuania back in two thousand four. What was that I mean? like compared so, to the UK? Oh, completely, completely different, mate. Really, completely different. Are Plus, I was working. Different? Is the laws different there? Oh. Well, it, it, back then it was because it was just before Lithuania entered the European Union. Okay, uh, uh, and. By the way, uh, when I said to you that my father, that I was assisting my father providing training for governmental units, what we were doing was uh, teaching them the European standards of mm. use of force. Yeah, Do yeah, you know yeah. What I mean? yeah so, exactly. Exactly. So it was around that time. It was around that time, but it was still a bit like the Far East. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, the guys, yeah. the guys that was working, the guys that was working the doors with were. Uh, really seasoned seasoned guys like really serious people a couple of them were former uh former um soldiers as well so really serious people i mean when i i was young when i started with them you know i got that job through my father because he, he knew a few people there so you know i've learned the ropes uh i was watching i was observing most of the time and i've seen a lot of people getting knocked out <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So you know things are completely different uh, in Eastern Europe. I think things must have calmed down now. Now that it, uh, the country entered the Europe, yeah. But it's completely different than here. You cannot get away. You would not get away here with what you could get away uh, over there back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Brilliant. Yeah, For of sure. course, of course, man. Brilliant. Well, I've, I've really, really enjoyed talking to you, Julian. Thank you for coming no on, problems, man. man. Thank, thank you. Thank you for coming on. It's been. Um... Oh, thank you for inviting me, man. Yeah, yeah. It's been really, really interesting talk to you, mate. It's always, you know, when you when we when you start a new podcast, and you know, I'm going down. Yeah. You know, what kind of have you? I'm going down with this. It's always yeah. best to interview the people you've you've had relationships with and all spoken to in the past. Oh, sure, yeah. And 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 have a good. Who have a good bond, you know, you, you, yourself, Simon Morell, and um, there is some others. I've got some others coming. 
how long. Okay. Very, very, which I'm not going to say nothing. But 100%, I would love, you know, Lee, I've got a hit list and Lee Morrison's on that hit list. Lee yeah. Morrison. Jeff Thompson was on that hit list, but I've took him off yeah. because I don't think. Why? No, I've took him off because not yet, not yet, not yet. I've took him off because I feel as if um, he wouldn't want to talk about the subjects I would want to talk about. Right, and I think, okay, and yeah, I think, yeah. And I think Lee will. Be purely He's because I've listened, yeah, yeah, I've listened to Lee's podcasts on other on other shows and he yeah. really fucking gets into, he really gets into, you know, into detail. Oh, for and... sure. For sure. Lee, Lee is super interesting to speak yeah. to. And, you know, he's, yeah, he's exactly. a very, very knowledgeable guy. Yeah. I've met, um, I had the chance. Yeah. Yeah. Go on. Where, where, where Jeff's very, what? he's yeah, sort of like, he's come to... away from all that now. And he's... he has. Yeah. And it'll be just he a total. Has. I met him this year. Yeah. 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 And it'll so, be a total no, it was, waste it was, of time uh, of, of, of his time. Yeah, so mm. I wouldn't want to tell you. It, it, it was to through to. Russell. Do you know Russell Jarmesty? Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. Yeah, so it yeah. was it was through Ross that I that I was invited to uh, to meet the man, and it was great, a great guy to be around, Joff. But yeah, he's he, he shifted, didn't he? He's into his spiritual stuff right now. He's not. You know what? Well, you know, everyone to we, the own. Everyone to the own. You know. Um, oh, absolutely. I know, think I'll, I'll read, do the same I'll, someday. Yeah, I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Everyone to the own, man. I, I, I read. I read. Watch my back. And yeah, you know, years and years ago when we were kids, when we were kids, like we watched mm. films like New Jack City and Boys in the Hood. And yeah. the next day you got all your mates and you just made a gang up because, and you know, I, when I, I read um, Watch My Back and a lot of people got inspired by that. And they thought, you know, yeah. It was just. It was He's just, wrote quite a few good books, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's well, really awesome. good books. It's awesome. It, 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 there's no doubt about it. There's no doubt about it. The guy's the guy. The guy's brilliant. But you know, let's see. So hey, so what's happening in Julian's world now? What 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 are you getting up to now? Right. So now what's happening really is uh, me trying to build uh, my platform, my online platform. So I'm spending yeah. a lot of time right now working on the website. Uh, yeah. It's taking time because the, I, I really want it a certain way. It's going to be in a very particular style. Um, I, I'm also working on remastering my courses, my online tutorials. Uh, yeah, yeah. I filmed a lot of them, but I'm, I'm in the process of remastering everything now uh, so that I can put everything on the website. Uh, I'm going to have a lot of things on there. I'm going to have uh, corporate packages as well for okay. airline companies, taxi companies, bus companies, train, railway, mm -hmm. uh, all, all sorts, mate. I, I've got a lot of projects on the go. Uh, working with security industry, the the, um, the security authority industry as well, uh, with, with certain training providers as well. They've asked me to come forth uh, to, to teach a program you know for for security professionals basically yeah 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 um so that that's one thing uh, there are a few uh, international seminars as well uh, people are talking about it i was in portugal this year i was in france the year before uh, i'm supposed to go to germany probably next year as well uh, and obviously i'm a, i'm a i'm a full urban combatives instructor right now under mm. morrison so yeah yeah get that google be, guys uh, more and more opportunities yeah google google get on to Say google again. get on to google i've just talked to the, the, our listeners getting getting to get on to google google Lee morrison herbal urban combatives oh, yeah. and um again if if there's anyone who's who's interested in the manchester area especially wanted to learn about self-protection self-defense julian is 100 percent the guy to go to um I got yeah, so yeah, I got 100%. I got a YouTube channel called Adrenaline Combatives. Uh, yeah, if man. people want to go and have a look, there there are hundreds of videos on it. Uh, yeah. Where you know extracts of seminars, extracts of training material, and stuff like that. If people want to go and have a look, they'll get a really good idea of the the sort of training that we focus on. Fantastic, Julian. It's been great talk to you. Thanks for coming awesome. on. Awesome. Thank you, Luci. And I hope the listeners have enjoyed it. It's something something a little bit different. I'll be giving to you guys. Um, like I said earlier, I, 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 I do want to like keep come away from the martial arts. Uh, but there's, you know, Julian's very, very self protection, very combatives. 
you can't even put it on, under that category. It's very like in your face, very realistic. There's a guy what's been there and done it, you know, is from homelessness to working on some of the roughest doors in Manchester. And um, he has a great technique. Uh, he can talk you down. And if he needs to, he can kick off. So he's definitely, <laughs> Julian, you've definitely walked to talk. Definitely, 100%. Thanks for coming Cheers, on. Cheers, I appreciate that. God bless you, my friend, and I hope to talk to you very, very soon. Take care, Lucci. Have a good one. Thank Take you, Take care, sir. brother. Bye-bye.